the Turbo Graphics had quite a healthy dose of pinball simulations, beginning with the excellent Crush series by Naxxet Soft, and ending with Time Cruise by Face. Time Cruise boasts that it has a quote seven screen playing field. Well, that is kind of true. According to page four of the manual, these fields are actually seven buildings linked together by a time travel pod that moves through them at ultra high speeds. This pod obviously is the pinball itself. When you begin, the ball will materialize onto the play field. <clears throat> the ball will materialize onto... Hey, what's going on? Okay... That's weird. Anyway, the controls are pretty simple. Down plunges the ball, button one activates the right side of flippers, and left on the control pad activates the left side of flippers. You have the ability to nudge the playfield by hitting right or button two, but be careful, the game will tilt after too many nudges and end your ball. There is also a unique option where you can connect a tap and three controllers for a different control scheme. I've tried it and it's a neat idea, but I've never really had any trouble with just the single control pad. As with the default settings of traditional pinball, you will begin with three balls and when all balls are lost, the game is over. Figure? Figure what? You mean like, figures you would suck and lose? <laughs> Who knows, the spelling in this game kills me. Destination? Look, we have bonus chance. And bonus chance. <laughs> Sounds like steam escaping. <sighs> I really hope someone gets that one. Anyway, the game has typical pinball goodies, including bumpers, spinners, targets, slingshot kickers, rescue items to add barriers and center stoppers, and even insert lights for bonus count. You will spend a lot of time in this main hub area, which is split into multiple sections. It's really a large playfield, and I have to admit, the amount of passageways and places to shoot into are quite numerous. The screen exhibits a pretty smooth scroll up and down. The horizontal movement is really unique for a pinball game, but it does freeze for a split second and can hinder the flow. While diverse, large, and exhibiting a nice look, the main play area could use a little more atmosphere. There are some beautiful highlight colors that pop and animation here and there, but it's all outlined with brown... bricks? Honestly, I guess that is the building part they talked about, so it sort of works. Good ball physics and a digital pinball are important, and Time Cruise does a solid job with them overall. You cannot do many pinball tricks. <laughs> nope, no post passing happening here. And every once in a while, the ball will do some bizarre things. Okay, okay, okay. But the flow of the ball is quite good as a whole. One of the main goals here is to increase your bonus and bonus multiplier for a final giant payoff. The other main goal is to activate the time travel systems by hitting its corresponding switch. Once smacked enough times, this system will illuminate, allowing you to shoot inside for the chance stages. The bonus chance allows you to increase your score. Deep Sea Challenge is kind of weird but unique, and the Medieval Dungeon is really fun. Wow, look at that flipper gap. Damn, did John Trudeau design this? <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes, pinball humor. Now here we have animations and quirky characters and some life, something slightly missing from the main play area. The extra ball chances allow you to get an extra ball. These deviate from pinball, instead serving up some unique timed minigames. There's Neanderthal Golf Challenge, Lunar Space Construction Site, and a tilting platform and, oh god, I'm awful at this one. They do get a bit repetitious the more you play, but the timers decrease with each visit, making them more and more challenging. Even the activation switches require more hits the deeper into the game you dive. Every once in a while, the time travel system will screw up and send you to another dimension. 
Yep, bizarre characters and even floating Roman numerals to increase multiplier. Again, this stuff is cool. These bonus levels also have really good music, not to take away from the regular main themes with two to choose from, which are also quite good. On an audio side note, there are only so many sound effects in these kinds of games, but I can tell you that they're all very pinball-ish and work well here. And that is Time Cruise. As a pinball fan, I can say that it does a faithful job staying true to pinball, while also adding some unique options that you cannot have on a traditional table. Gameplay on Time Cruise tends to go on a bit long, especially with the ability to earn extra balls via bonus stages and other methods. Perhaps implementing a simple password feature like in Devil's Crush would have been nice so you could take a little break. But there is an ending after hitting a certain amount of points to work toward for some extra motivation. There is also a healthy option mode at the main title screen, allowing you to select music, sound effects, and even practice a couple of stages. At the end of the day, I really like this game, and I think it is a very solid turbo chip entry. If you're not a pinball fan or simulated pinball fan, well, Time Cruise won't alter your opinion. But if you are, this turbo chip has enough unique stuff packed into it that it's worth your time and should satisfy you for a while. Oh, 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 oh. come on. Yeah, figure. There is something about the organic atmosphere of the two Crush games that I love. Devil's Crush especially has a real dynamic feel to it and is superior. Time Cruise is somewhat missing this sense of life, but it does make up for it with some original ideas and a large main play area. Time Cruise is a fun little game and does what it's supposed to do, produce a good pinball table on your home console. So until next time, this is your resident pinhead saying, keep on flipping.